Hi, everybody. It's Rhonda Cobb, the Money Coach, and welcome to our show. We're going to have a really special show today, and I know you're going to love it. This is such an opportunity for me. About a week ago, I was having um, a snack with a friend, and he was recounting the trauma of having this teacher in school that was so mean to him and told him he would never amount to anything. And I thought that was horrible. And I said, well, that wasn't a very good teacher. Besides that, she was dead wrong because my friend is a very successful consultant. So I thought of instantly the guest that we are going to talk to today. So Ginny Ulch is an author of children's books. She also works in a school as a school counselor and psychologist. She writes these positive books to help children that are facing difficult situations. And they help with really important things like bullying and self-esteem and what it's like to be adopted or in foster care or having specific conditions that the other kids don't all share and loss. So, And then after these books are sold, she donates proceeds to organizations as well. So it's a really awesome thing, and it's really good to have Ginny on our show. And she has brought with her a special guest who later in the show is actually going to read for us one of the books. So make sure everybody feel welcome. Hi, Ginny, and hi, Donna. How are you guys today? Hi, Rhonda. Oh, great. Thank you. Awesome. Well, Jenny, tell us what made you decide to write that very first book. There must have been something that just made you decide, you know what, I have got to write some books for my kids. Well, and I always wrote as a child. That was how I worked through problems. I would write poetry, I'd write songs, and it helped me cope with the teenage years. And then I put it on the back burner when I got older and got busy. But when I was in my 20s, I wrote a book and I gave it to an illustrator and the illustrations were horrible and I didn't want to hurt her feelings. So I just put it away and kind of gave up on it. And then when I adopted my kids and the baby raccoon, I couldn't find a book to help children who were being adopted that were older and had relationships with their birth families. So those are unique issues. And I had 900 pictures of Bandit the raccoon. So it made a perfect subject for my book. And I was able to write about those things to help my kids through their specific situation. And then I'm a school counselor. So I encounter kids who have all kinds of issues. And I thought, well, I can write books to help them. Most of my books have a child version and then they have a professional version to help parents and educators. So my love series all have love in the title, and I use animals to show that animals have personalities and to promote empathy for animals as well as people. And that's kind of where it all started. And then I still wanted to help in other ways. So I do donate books and stuffed animals to children's services, and I've donated books to the school counselors at TPS. I have a new book right now called Saved by Love, From Rescue Dog to Rockstar, and how his life changed when he was adopted. It also gently talks about abuse and how it's important for children to ask for help if they're being hurt. And so this book just came out. I'll get the actual hard copies on Friday. And then I'm going to donate a portion of the proceeds to the local animal rescues. Oh, that's cool. That's so neat. So um, with a new book coming out on Friday, where, you know, where, where are we going to go to get this book? Because now I got to go look for a book. Um, it's available on Amazon Um, it's called Saved by Love from Rescue Dog to Rockstar and it's under Virginia Ulch U-L-C-H I also have heart to heart resources on Facebook and it's the number two 
Okay. And I'm on Teachers Pay Teachers. So there are a lot of sources to get it. And I'll be doing a live book signing at Franklin Park Mall December 14th as well. Oh, cool. Well, I'll have to come out and see that, you know. That'll be cool. But all the other books now, there are several that join Saved by Love that um, deal with different things. So, and um, the one that really sounds really cute is Love You, Teddy. Tell us a little bit about Love You, Teddy. Love You, Teddy has an actual bear family from Alaska. My dad was a wildlife photographer and he had gone on a trip and came home and had all these pictures of bear. And I saw about eight of them. Oh, I can make a story out of that. That one's a little more serious because it deals with loss and all the emotions that go along with a loss and all of the children in the family being small bear, um, they all deal with it differently. And they have to learn that not everyone deals with loss in the same way. Oh, that's But so it's a beautiful cool. book. Oh, I bet it is. And I know your dad was a great photographer. I have some of his pictures laying around here that your mom turned into, um, you know, those gift cards. Mm-hmm. That, yeah. Yep. Yep, I had gotten some of those at some point along the way. And they're just beautiful. I remember he took beautiful pictures. But I think this is so good for the kids to be able to have books that enable them to see that they're not alone in the world. And it's such a valuable thing for adults like us and grandparents and parents and teachers to really take the time and the effort to feed our children's minds and their self-esteem. Can You know, you're far more qualified to talk about that than I. So tell us a little bit about how important that is to the care and upbringing of a child, that they have some time just to be a kid? Well, and it is really important, especially, and this is why the topics of the book um, are the ones that I chose. Like a child with ADHD, they get redirected and corrected so many times a day that it's hard on their self-esteem. In children in foster care, they're going through a lot of issues. Was it my fault? What did I do? What did I not do? Kids who are bullied, um, you know, they internalize that. So in the books, um, I Love You Anyway is the ADHD book. I put famous people who have or had ADHD so they can see that, oh my gosh, you know, they had this and they're famous. They're a singer, they're an actor, they're a comedian. Um, Same with foster care. I put famous people who were in foster care were adopted. And Bully Fish, I have a list of famous people who weren't cool in school. And there's a little blurb by each of those people about when they were bullied and what they did to cope with it. So the kids feel like I am not alone. These people went through this and look where they are now. So that's a big thing with me is to make sure that the kids see that there's nothing wrong with them, that they're valued because they need that. Absolutely. Every single one of them needs that. Think back to, you know, when we were in school and we didn't really have school counselors then, but Somewhere along the way, there would be that one teacher that you might remember that was so supportive that just Mm -hmm. said, yeah, you can do that. Why not? Instead of the teacher like my friend was discussing that said, you can't do that. You can't, you know, you'll never amount to anything. Um, You know, how wrong could you possibly be? 
and I would think that would apply to, oh, say 100% of the students. That, that would be one thing you should probably never say to a kid. Mm -hmm. And everybody needs that person that believes in them. Oh, absolutely. Don't you still remember the people that were there, the ones that believed in you? My third grade teacher. Yeah, <laughs> see? <laughs> <laughs> That's who comes to mind, my third grade teacher, Mrs. English. She was awesome. That is so funny. And I think mine was a fifth grade teacher, Mrs. Euler. She was awesome. She was she was just like, well, no, you can do whatever you set your mind to do. <laughs> Go do it. <laughs> yep. And and that was the first the first I'd heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what? Again? Oh, okay. <laughs> I had no idea up until then. Look what she started. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she's passed by now. She was the funnest thing. Oh, my goodness. So we want to make sure we save enough time for... For Miss Donna, because Donna, don't you read the stories on YouTube for, for Jenny? I do. Okay, so oh. we want to make sure we have plenty of time for you to read the story you're going to read for us. Because the listeners are going to want to be able to have the kids with them to um, listen to the story. So are you about ready? Oh, sure. Well, let me yeah. give a it takes about five minutes. Oh, okay, great. Well, this is a perfect time then. We can we can start. And you're going to read Happy to Be Me? Is that the one we're reading? Yes, it is. Awesome. Oh, I can't wait to hear it. Whenever you're ready. Okay. <laughs> All right. Can I give a Happy quick... To be can me? I give a quick... Yeah. Yes. I intro. was going to give a quick intro to Donna. Thank you. Um, just... Just to give a background, I met Donna when she was doing prevention programs at my school, and I walked in on her classroom presentations, and her excitement and the voices she uses were just contagious. So I asked her to read the books for my videos, and then we connected with Tom Ovasek, who's a producer of commercials, and he volunteered to create the videos. And so Donna reads all of them. Um, it's a Heart to Heart Resources is our YouTube channel. We have three of them currently that are up. Love Bandit, I Love You Anyway, and Bully Fish. So you will have to check her out. She's amazing. And she's going to read that <laughs> first book that I wrote that I buried for 20 years. Oh, wow. All right, Donna. You're on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, thank you, Jenny. Okay, happy to be, B-E-E, -E, me, by Virginia Alts. Many years ago, there was a happy beehive. Everyone in the hive was happy except Hannah, a little worker bee. She was unhappy because she wanted to be the queen bee. She was getting ready to fly away and start her own beehive when she ran into a wise bee. Where are you going, little one? said the wise bee. I am going away to start my own beehive. I want to be the queen, said the little bee. The wise bee told the little one that it would be very hard to live without the help of others, but she didn't believe him. The wise bee sat the little one down to tell her a story. Once upon a time, there were many letters in the alphabet. One letter, the letter P, wanted to run away too. The letter Z heard about this and talked with the little letter. Z explained that all of the letters have to work together to make a word, said Wise B. The little letter was angry because she didn't like having to do what the other letters did. She wanted to go off by herself. So Z told little P to try to make a word without using the help of any other letters. P kept trying to make a word, but all that came out